Hi, I'm Brian Schiffman, the President and CEO of the Vaughn Chamber of Commerce. Uh, pleased to be with you today. Thanks for joining us from home. And uh, hopefully some of you are able to be at work. Uh, we're slowly starting to bring the economy back on. I think it's still going to be a slow recovery. Uh, as all our friends, uh, all our economist friends are telling us, and uh, we're listening to our, the uh, health professionals. But I wanted to welcome you uh, to another uh, installment of our business uh, resource series. We've done a number of town halls as well. I think uh, Jennifer from our team was saying this was the tenth one we've done overall. So it's been good to be with you. Try and uh, provide some uh, information on how you can navigate COVID. Uh, stay calm. Uh, we had the anxiety expert and uh, Minister Tobolo recently. We, um, <clears throat> we also recently had uh, Deputy Chief Economist from CIBC, Benjamin Tal. That was a great segment. Uh, we've had a number of uh, accountants and uh, employment lawyers. And today we're going to get into how to navigate your brand in troubling times with a good friend of the chamber, John Amendola. Uh, we're going to talk about marketing and advertising strategies. Uh, we're going to have a great dialogue uh, after John gives an opening presentation. Just a few uh, housekeeping notes first. Uh, you've heard me say many times that uh, we're all in this together, but we're all facing it a little bit differently based on our individual circumstance. So if there's anything the chamber can do for you, uh, for instance, if you uh, have a specific question, so many of you are reaching out on your industry, uh, feel free to email us. We are working through those and getting back to you. Getting back to you. Uh, on our um, resource page, uh, you go to COVID-19 uh, business resources at the top of our homepage. You click on that, it takes you to a page, shows you all the government resources, pretty much real time, so you're not searching the internet for that information. Uh, there's also a business tips page connected to that from business professionals. I want to thank uh, the Vaughn Enterprise, well, VBAC, Vaughn Business Enterprise Center, uh, City of Vaughn, for supporting us in this series. Also, Render Media, our live webcasting partner. Uh, they're in the background of all of these. They've done a great job. And, of course, the team at the Chamber. Uh, you guys have been fabulous. And um, last note, uh, Facebook Marketplace, the Chamber added this to help those who can sell products and services during COVID uh, have that opportunity. The Marketplace was started about three weeks ago. Uh, it's now up to 150 members, uh, which I think is great. People are actively selling and buying there, so I'd encourage you to use it. It is free for members, um, so take, check that out. Okay, without further ado, so we have uh, our good friend John Amendola. He's the president of Amendola Media Group. He's a fearless leader, uh, and he isn't scared to get into the trenches, whether it's with his clients and his friends and his staff. Um, John is, uh, we like to joke, he's known for a couple things, for fast talking and constant movement. But I was going to say, you're also known for a couple other things. Uh, you're known for the, um, the depth of people, the amount of people that you've actually helped and clients throughout uh, Vaughn and beyond, uh, your various clients. And you're also well known for SNAP Media, and uh, you've done some wonderful work with the Chamber and our community partners over the years. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, uh, John, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, Brian. I'm excited, and uh, you know, I guess I'm definitely known for talk. At least you said just a lot, not too much. Um, a lot of maybe not too much. much, not too much. Yeah, when the passion takes over, you might see that today. Like when the passion takes over. I can't really stop myself, but, um, you know, I, I like to think that that's, that's a good thing. But first of all, you know, thanks for having me. Um, thanks to you, Jennifer, my good buddy, Mr. Render here for, for making, um, you know, us to the world. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy time. And, you know, like you said, we're all facing it in a different light, but a lot the same as well. I mean, just overall, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's on a global scale, so just sort of that in itself. But, um, uh, you know, yeah, we, we've been in Vaughn, like you said, it's, we're going on about year 13, 14 through SNAP. Oh, dear, we've covered over 10,000 events. So we get around in a good way. We get around in a good way. Um, but, um, yeah, and, and in recent years, we've really morphed beyond just that into a, a full-service sort of marketing and strategy um, uh, and content firm. So, you know, again, thanks for having me. Um, we had a brief chat yesterday about when my passion gets going, my mouth gets going a little bit too. So Mike's going to, I'm going to be uber professional, but just in case I get passionate, we said, if I swear, he's going to, 
<clears throat> try and bleep me out. And part of the presentation, we talk about being authentic. And if you know me, I fucking shit a lot. So um, I'm trying, you know, my best not to. But I said to Brian, every time I say fuck, I'll donate 50 bucks to the food bank and 25 for a shit. So hopefully, uh, you know, we, I'm not going to. We've, we've already, we're, we're, we're already we're raising thousands, money. For thousands of dollars today. But I definitely want to, you know, give, give Peter and the great work he does at the food bank some money. So, um, you know. Stay tuned for a couple, and, and Mike, Mike will keep up. I have the live feed on somewhere, but I won't see it or hear it. So I'm really excited to to kind of go back after. But anyway, so um, John, the the, the over under is three hundred dollars. Just okay. if you're playing at home, I remember that. So we're, so the, yeah, we're at seventy five already. Just for me having to tell you what it was, right? Um, so um, uh, like I said to, to Brian, I'll do my best not to kind of talk too much. I've got a whiteboard in front of me and a phone. If I get a message from Brian, if I'm talking and Mike uh, Render is going to put the slides along. So, um, you know, if you see my kind of head bob, like Brian said, I move a lot. So, you know, I'm definitely there. So, Brian, if you want, um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go through through the deck, like you said, maybe take about 10 minutes. And it's just a very, like, kind of macro level. Um, based on the audience, uh, we, we really, um, uh, the whole hyper-local trend was already really starting this great emergence, if you will, of, the last few years really like globalization happened the world got really small the last two decades and then it you know now all of a sudden it's big again we, we can't even travel if you will um so you know there's never been a greater time to sort of own your local market so i thought fitting the deck is very generic so we'll give it to you you can send it out at the end if anybody wants it because it's just a really good roadmap um especially given the time now we preach a lot about the the tools are free so you really just have to you know, you can start with just investing some time and really sort of take your, your business and your brand to the next level. So um, that being said, um, Mike, if you want to um, start the slides, I will follow along with you here because I'm going to just, so we're all on the same page. Okay, so basically, um, if we start, uh, we'll skip page one, we'll just get right to page two. You see some amazing stats here, I, and I just pulled some of this data in the last couple of weeks. You see the bottom. There's a, there's a few uh, a, a few of the sources there. Um, obviously, given uh, uh, the data at North American basis, but you know from an average point of view, um, you know the data is the data. So there's a few stats on here that are you know really intriguing to me, especially um, uh, for local small business. So. The first staff, 46% of Google searches have local intent. So, I mean, just think about how many people are on Google and then think about almost half of them are searching locally. So it's not just like random, you know, you saw something on TV and you want to kind of go search it. That's a really important one. The, the last one there also 41% of, of brick and mortar buyers read reviews before making a purchase. That's another really big one. Um, you know, we all know that. So, you know, later we'll talk about reputation management. 81% um, of shoppers research online purchasing. So I've been talking to some people and, you know, this whole curbside revolution has really had them, you know, consider their, their footprint and how they use their space and, and this sort of thing. What they're noticing is people are showing up. The transaction time is way faster. Um, it's, it's because so many more people are now doing their due diligence and, and, and when they get to, you know, sort of point of purchase, it's literally grab and go, if you will. So um, you know, there's a couple of really, really cool stats there, um, and you can keep reading. 180 minutes is the average amount of time that consumers are spending on social media now. So that's three hours a day. Um, so, to give you an example. You know, I'll be I'll be visiting my mom, and after dinner, you know, Italian way, we eat too much food. We go to the couch, sit down, or watching TV. And you know, I'm doing this, and I'm getting, oh, you're always on your phone. And and now this is, you know, let's go back a few years because now she's always on her phone too. But um, I'm saying, you know, I don't, I don't watch TV. Um, I, I watch my phone. So, um, you know, that's a very important, you know, thing. So, um, you know, 96% of small businesses say they use social media in their marketing strategy. I don't know what the number is. I, I'm, I can tell you my opinion. It's a hell of a lot less than 96% of people that are actually doing it properly and consistently. Having a presence is one thing. Executing and doing something with, with your presence and your brand is, is another thing. So, you know, with that said, we got the, uh, you know, you see the next slide, what is a brand? Um, so a brand, ultimately, you know, you are your brand. A brand is um, personality. Uh, a brand is the way a company, organization, or individual is perceived by those who experience it. It's basically, uh, you know, it says that there, the feeling that your product or organization evokes. So, um, you know, 
the 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 premise of business today should be based off of what uh, consumers are looking for. So, um, albeit the consumer behavior is really changing now, um, and you know we really don't even know to what extent. Uh, you know, in some places, um, I'll give you an example. I was on a call a couple of weeks ago with a large um, national furniture uh, chain, and you know their online revenue um, had gone from a couple of a percent to you know double or sort of triple or quadruple that in a short amount of time. And you know this forecast was um, uh, you know supposed to be a ten year plan, and and it, it happened in in two months. So uh, you know when we reset, they may not stay that high, but they're definitely not going to 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 go that low. So you know we we really have to understand what the consumer behavior is, but ultimately at the end of the day. Um, you know, convenience, value, ease is sort of the premise of what it's based on um, and, and, you know, sort of just personality. So number four, um, we go to and we talk about being authentic. So this goes back to Brian telling me if I say fuck, he, you know, we'll try and bleep us. But the reality is what he said was, you know, um, I come into the call and I know, you know, I, I work the crowd. This is what I do. Right. I talk a lot. And, uh, and I know when it's appropriate or when it's not appropriate, but at the end of the day, sometimes that doesn't matter. Um, because being authentic is probably the most important, um, hands down, the most important part of your brand, your identity and your whole sort of story. If you not, um, if you aren't who you are, then, then what are you? So giving, um, you know, being authentic when you're telling your story allows you to really connect emotionally. So, you know, Brian says to me, but that's you. So, you know, let, you know, Brander do his thing and get the bleeps going. But at the end of the day, I want, you know, people to see you and, you know, and, and I'll have this conversation um, with a lot of people, my therapists, my coaches, my, my partners, whatever. Um, at the end of the day, I guess my attitude is this is sort of the way I am. And, and if you don't want to do business with me, that's okay. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not malicious in nature. So at the very least, um, you're not going to not want to do business with me. You're, I mean, hey, listen, if you don't want to do business with me because I say fuck too much, I don't know what relevance that has to do with the work. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm going to just be authentic. 86% of consumers prefer an authentic and honest brand. You get what you get and you know ahead of time going in what you're getting. And I don't think that there, as a customer, again, convenience, value, uh, and ease. My good friend, Rita Pelletieri, put that in my head. We had dinner last, um, uh, in October and I don't know what we were getting on. And she was talking about RBC and, and it's true convenience, value, and ease. The more you can give that to, um, your clientele, the more, um, you know, their, 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 you know, their, the relationship long-term, you know, we're in it to win it. It's a marathon, not a race and nobody's perfect. So, you know, you got to highlight the good and you got to highlight the bad. And there's no shame in that. Like you can't win without losing. Right. So, um, again, being authentic is probably, um, you know, and anybody that follows me knows like it's the only way, um, look at, look at the successful, um, individuals, look at successful companies, you know, um, being, uh, I, I can't even just stress enough. I, the passion starts to take over because it troubles me that people just, you just don't, don't be fake. That's, that's the best thing I can tell you. If we go to page five, um, you know, creating a recognizable brand now, of course, again, there's thresholds. So, you know, um, you, you know, you do have to be cognizant and very aware of who your audience is. So when we go through this whole branding exercise, I like to look at it in three phases. And we're kind of talking through the first phase. Um, the, the latter part of the deck talks a little bit about the second phase. And then the third phase is, is up to the individual. So the three phases are sort of who are we? Let's create an identity. What does that look like? So what does it look like means? Okay, sure. Yeah. What, are, what logo am I using? And what are my fonts and my colors? And yes, that's important. But, but it's, it's, more, it's more than that. It's, it's what's our message and who are we talking to? Once we understand who our audience is and we're, we're hyper-focused, um, you know, if you were into a whole bunch of different things and you've had to pivot, you know, that's a huge buzzword in the COVID, COVID times. Um, you know, getting ready for business from a distance, which is what we're calling sort of post COVID, uh, pivoting is awesome. And, you know, survival of the fittest and everything is fantastic. And that's the way we need to live. Um, but you still need to stay focused. So find, you know, one or two things. So for us, for example, um, shit, we have 22 services, give or take, if you will. And, you know, we've really narrowed that down now to the seven or eight things that are the, the most demand. And at the same time, if you will, the easiest to output. So we're running um, uh, leaner than ever. You know, we're we're watching our cash flow more than ever, and all that great stuff. So we've had to, you know, really 
really, uh, you know, sort of narrow that and, and focus. So we know who we are, who we're talking to and what we need to tell them. So, you know, in doing that, we've created a, a recognizable uh, a brand. We're authentic. We have consistency across all of our touch points. Our identity is very unique. We're, we engage with our engagement is the number. So after you've created your brand and your local audience and you get out there, nothing touches engagement. That That's the, the ultimate, you know, phase three, if you will. Um, finish with phase one, who are we? Uh, and then we have to create the customer loyalty, create the customer experience. Uh, I'm obsessed with the ultimate customer experience. Sometimes too much, um, but you know, it's like I said earlier, people remember that and that's that authenticity. Um, you know, Brian said it in the bio there and it's true, whoever, you know, in my office wrote the bio, it, it, you know, with reasonability, absolutely. I don't believe anybody should take advantage of anybody and I don't believe we should undervalue us. And I don't believe in a time like COVID, um, price should be something you consider adjusting whatsoever. I think you just need to really focus on creating more value and creating a better experience. So in this case, you know, how much of a contactless experience can we give the customer so that when they get to you, you fall in that 81% and they're coming to you. And as much as we love people right now, and we want to be able to hug and kiss and hang out with people, but really we just need to eat. So the faster they come and they take your product and leave from the curbside, you know, the faster we get the next customer. And, and you know, for what it's worth, you, you're going to be able to run a little bit leaner until that time comes. So we have to really make sure that your brand is recognizable and it stands out and it's the consistency across. Once we've done that, we know who we are. Now we have to know who they are. Who's our audience? And, and, we probably have a few different types of clientele. Um, you know, if you're a clothing store, you sell to adults and children's. Do you sell to just men? Do you sell to just women? Do you sell to both? Are you bespoke, etc.? Based on that, uh, it's going to determine sort of um, number six. It will determine sort of who we are. So then we talk about you know the the importance of personality. Um, you know, personal brand. There's a cool quote. You know, personal brand. What is personal brand? It's the unique combination of skills, experience, and personality. So once we mesh our unique brand with our potential audience, then we can start to look at what the messaging is. Um, so again, phase one, it's sort of what we just sort of kind of talked about. It's identifying sort of who we are and who we want to talk to. Once we've identified um, seven, who we are and who we want to talk to, then we start the what and the how. What are we saying to them? And how are we saying it to them? The third phase is execution. Um, I'll skip number two, I'll go to number three, and then we'll go back to number two. I don't spend a lot of time on number three because I'm a very big believer in doing it yourself. So you're not gonna pay an agency to execute. If you're paying an agency to execute, you're, 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 at, a, you're at a different level. I'm gonna say you're, you're not in the one to 10 sort of employee range, maybe not even a little bit past that. Um, you should be paying an agency um, or a consultant or just investing the time and educating yourself into what we've sort of identified as this first phase and now what's going to be the second phase. Creating your content, creating your strategy and sort of telling you um, what and how you should do. So you're an expert in your field, have an expert. To, it doesn't take an expert to go on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or Pinterest or TikTok and post something. It, it takes some time and energy to understand what we're posting where is you're also going to change your message based on the platform given demographic of said platform. There's definitely some overlap. So um, I'm a 41 year old entrepreneur. I'm on five social platforms, but most of my colleagues are probably on two. So you're not going to try and target me across all five. We're probably going to stick to Instagram and LinkedIn, not necessarily TikTok. But um, when we get you know through it and we talk about how that message goes out there um, from the execution point, you know, we talk about you must stay consistent. Clients expect the same standards at every touch point of your business. Customers don't want to be surprised, especially now more than ever. So, you know, the, the message is the same. If you're authentic, if you're consistent, if you're on it, there's no surprises. Now you can really dial in on your messaging and you can really dial in on sort of focusing on the customer experience. So that brings us back to sort of what and how, um, you know, we do it. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to find what our niche is. Um, everybody hears this sort of buzzword, um, you know, it's a niche market, it's a niche this, it's a niche that. What's a niche? I mean, ultimately there's a definition of niche is products or services or interests that appeal to a small specialized section of the population. So 
Um, ultimately, uh, a niche can be small, it can be big, it really depends on the size of, of, of the market you're in. Um, but at the end of the day, once you've identified what your niche is, um, you know, you can then own it. Number nine, Mike, you can then know, own it. And uh, that's how we really take it to the next level. That's how you become uh, an expert in your field. Once you've found your niche, then we can really start to look at um, how we talk to these people. So now we know who we are, we know what we're focusing on, and now we can really start to look at, you know, how we, we, we talk to these people. Um, and, you know, one of the things I can really tell you in, in a time like this, a lot of questions I get asked uh, the, probably the most, the single question I get asked the most is, should I stop my advertising? Should I stop my marketing? And I'm saying all day long, no. And I'm not saying no because I'm in that business. My, my business is down 60 or 70% like most of you right now uh, on that side. Um, because, you know, people do. Uh, you know, I can tell you you're not supposed to, and I'll give you some great you know reasons why. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're in an industry, uh, you know, if you can't write the check, you can't write the check. But ultimately, fundamentally, the statistics are something like in crisis, 52% of businesses stop advertising and marketing, 38% stay the same, and 16% um, or 36% and 16% give or take, 16% spend more money. Um, those 16% statistically through time um, always excel every single time. The data does not lie. Um, some of the biggest companies, um, Einstein started General Electric in after the depression or just before Uber came out of 2008. So, you know, just go into your Google and type in companies that came out of a recession and you'll beat your mind. Your eyes will be popping for a second for sure. It's some crazy shit when you look at how these people did it. Well, how did they do it? Um, if anybody listened to the news yesterday, you saw Walmart's, I have a, this chart here and it's, it's insane. Their forecast, same source sales for 2021 is like double. It's, it's wild. They're, it, it, they're blowing people away at a UMAR, uh, Walmart's quarterly comparison, US sales compared to quarterly earlier and that's fiscal. They're like triple because they didn't double down. They went out of their way as soon as this happened. And they doubled down on their marketing efforts. They focused on a very specific niche. So all of a sudden, Walmart was like the grocery store to go to, the, the, the home hardware store, you know, the, the, the hardware store to go to. So they really focused on essential services, essential needs, changed the stores around, created places in the parking lot, changed their website around like quick like. And it's all to scale. So you don't have to be at Walmart size to have the money to do it. If you're a two or three person organization or a 20 or 30 person organization or two or 300 person organization, it's all relative. But they focused on their specialty, their market, their audience. And that was it. People were on it. So now all of a sudden Walmart's, you know, doing this and their forecast for, you know, the next one or two years is, is, is going to be, you know, lights out compared to, to where they were, uh, you know, two months ago. And yeah, okay, they're, you know, um, uh, obviously sort of uh, more affordable irrelevant. Um, they did it right. Uh, we, we operate in a, um, I'm not here to talk about us today, but I'll give you one real example. We operate a, a very successful real estate marketing um, company. And we did this exactly. We doubled down when we went in because of the technology that we were into this 3D space capture all of a sudden was the new normal. So the industry is down 80%. The real estate market volume of listings is down 80% over the last couple of months. Average 60 to 80% is, is the, the sort of up and down and, and now we're trending up. Um, our business, we were, uh, we were down about 40%, 30 to 40% during the same amount of time. So that 50% swing is because we didn't turn the funnel off, we turned it up and we talked to the, the audience about the specific product. And I think so far I've been talking to my phone's already rang three times. So we're in front of the audience, we understand the message and we understand what they want. So rec biggest recommendation is don't turn off the funnel. Uh, number 10, we talk again about being a local expert, being a hyper local expert. The local economy, this whole support local boom, again, we were already on it, the millennial generation, it's, you know, we're all about it. Um, you know, some of their theory may change a little bit because they're not going to be able to buy maybe the $300 local pair of jeans. They may have to go to the mall and buy the $100 local pair of jeans. I don't know. Um, but the point is, uh, and for the immediate foreseeable future, nobody can argue this um, because there really is no market beyond your local market unless you're, you know, into import export, a uh, whole other game. Um, own your market. 72% of people, um, sorry, people spend 72% of their household income. Uh, in a five sort of kilometer, five mile radius. Uh, so 
you know, even though groceries are being delivered to you right now, you're still buying it from one of the same three or four or five, uh, you know, grocery stores that, that are, you know, up the road, uh, up the road from your home. So it's very, 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 very important to, you know, focus, find your niche and just own, um, you know, own your local market. And, and then, uh, you know, and then it's lights out. Um, the last part of, of the deck, I won't really get into too much. Um, uh, it's, it's just more about sort of the, the, the different ways you can do it. But I'm going to tell you this. Um, and and I, I post a lot of video content. Uh, video content is the number one way to engage. Uh, sidebar, I probably have a few friends on this call right now that are scared to talk to their camera. I got to tell you, don't be. I record. I say whatever I want. I throw this shit out there. Whatever happens, happens. And uh, I'll get, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that. Uh, you know what? It's being authentic. And about two years ago or so, two and a half years ago, I started this. I'm just going to start talking to my phone every day. And I'm a hardcore sales guy and i'll put a headset on and take a list and and talk all day if if you want but um i'll tell you i don't have to do that anymore uh this tool's done that so the tools are free time if you don't have it now you have a serious problem make it um because this is this is the the answer you have um i've been doing this for 17 years and the one thing i've always heard Marketing and advertising is expensive. Da, 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 da. It's the first thing I should cut, whatever. You also can't grow if you don't do it. So just, just put a plan in place and appreciate that today's day and age isn't like it was five or 10 or, you know, you forget about 10 or 15 years ago, even five years ago. You don't have to drop 50,000 flyers in mailboxes and, and buy radio ads. And you don't even have to spend money on Facebook. Just pick up your phone for 180 minutes a day and just engage. And I don't, don't get a bot. Don't go start just double tapping everything. Read, post, talk to people, engage. The algorithm works wonders. They want rich content. They want video. They want to see storytelling and they want to see engagement. So with, with, with that being said, just really quickly, I'll run through these. Um, Mike, you can just kind of slide through them. I'll just talk really quickly on a few points. But contactless engagement right now is huge. Nobody wants to – people want to see people, but nobody wants to kind of touch anybody. We all know that. So really focus. Um, we've created a lot of content lately for some of our clients – who have, who have had to pivot and want to show, um, you know, show their audience uh, now um, how they do business, if you will. So in the, in the you know, the business from a, dis uh, business from a distance, post-COVID. Um, digital storytelling is basically ultimately what I've been talking about. You know, share your story, share your knowledge and your expertise through your digital platforms. And I can't stress enough, be consistent. Don't post one thing on Facebook and another thing on Instagram. Like I said, you're, you're going to be focused. You're going to post the same, arguably, give or take, maybe a few things like Facebook doesn't have hashtags. You're still talking to the same people. So the content may be curated a little bit differently for the platform, but ultimately you're telling a story, you're updating people, you're being informative, you're showing your expertise, your personality, your authenticity, and your strong presence. The only thing you're after is creating conversation. So I use skin improvement. Ashley does a killer job on a regular basis. She is up to the game during COVID next level on there every day, giving away value and education and value and education, not trying to sell anybody, anything, just staying in front of all of the noise, staying in front. And now the clouds are parted and the sun is out. And I'm going to tell you that when spas are allowed to open again, she'll be the busiest or one of the busiest spas in town because she's going to be the first person think people think about um, and her following has increased dramatically during this time because nobody's had anything to do. I bet you that 180 minute stat's going to be mind blowing when this is over. It's going to be like five or six hours a day. Almost as much time is going to be spent on social media as PlayStation. Um, so digital storytelling, managing your reputation. I mean, we all know, you know, Facebook and Google. So I'm going to give you this really quickly. Uh, what does it take somebody to leave you a Google um, rating? About 30 seconds. So here's a really good one. Email blast your clients, ask them for a time, get on a video. Hey, nice to see you. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well. I want to buy you a coffee. Do me a favor. If you're happy with my service, drop a Google rating. I'm going to send you a Starbucks gift card for five bucks. Go on Starbucks, da, 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 da. email here, click done. Wow. I just got a $5, cost me five bucks to get a five-star Google rating. Do some research and figure out the ROI on organic SEO and Google profile and Facebook ratings the best $5 coffee you ever spent. Um, using your online presence, again, we've talked a little bit about this, so this is repetitive. Um, I just didn't want to remove it and give my good friend Render a headache having to change the deck, so I'll skip through that. Um, and then there's just some examples. So the brand transition, I've given you some examples of some local businesses. 
Um, and, you know, you can just see the consistency is there. Mike, if you go to 16, you'll see Skin Improvement, Fresh House, and Skill Trades of Canada. And they're all very consistent. So you look at their feeds and the content, when you're, when you're following it, it looks very much the same, if you will. So it's on brand is what we call it, on brand. One of the most important things, again, for this whole exercise is authenticity is awesome. You have to be authentic. So I'm crazy and all over the place, like Brian said, but my messaging is consistent. The look and feel is the same. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm what I am, shit, this, that, whatever. It's all the same. So, um, and then these, the world of today, 3D, 360 virtual business tours, the cost in that space has been reduced. It's insane. You're getting this tech done now out in the marketplace for six to 11 cents a square foot. So if you have a couple thousand square feet or even 10 or 20,000 square feet, the cost today to bring your environment, your bricks and mortar online to a virtual environment is very minimal. Um, so don't 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 be scared. Don't be scared to ask. Don't be scared to look. Google, awesome, awesome, awesome tool. Um, and then that's it. We we mentioned video earlier. Um, you know, lights, camera, marketing. You know, uh, um, render's been a, a huge inspiration for me over the years. And the video, and you know, this guy's next level documentaries, films, whatever. So he's been a proponent of it for a long time, and you know, way ahead of the curve. And today. 61% of the content we consume in those 180 minutes on social media is video. So um, I'll just close with, with that. I know I probably went about eight minutes too long, but you know, that's what's going to happen. So um, that, the, the, the biggest takeaway here, Mike, you can, you can end the deck is, um, is just to be authentic, be consistent, but really get a plan and then just don't veer off, execute. It, this takes time, six months, 12 months before you start to see any kind of ROI. Um, especially if you're going and you're taking the organic approach. John, that was awesome. Actually, I, it, I just, I really genuinely wish we could get you to show some passion once in a while. Fuck. I didn't even take a breath, man. Now I'm, so, now I'm going to have all so I, I just, let me get it. Let me, let me just co cover a couple things. First of all, for, for render, render media in the background. I mean, I'm sure Mike, enjoyed and appreciated that shout out you just gave him. So maybe he'll split the donation. You're going to have to pay to Jerry for all your swearing. So we'll, we'll talk about that offline. Um, listen, I, there, there was so much great content there. I was taking a lot of notes. Uh, we have a lot of questions for you. For those watching at home, please do uh, ask us questions. My team will filter those to me as well. I, uh, I thought your point about uh, Getting Google reviews was really good. And I thought also the one that resonated with me was the idea of social media and making sure that your message, although you tweak it a bit, it's going to be different for Twitter than another, uh, different for Twitter than Facebook. At least it's the same overall message, not totally different. So I thought that was an important message. Um, so I thought, why don't we go back a bit? If you're a business watching from home, you have very few staff and you're dealing with this pandemic and you have no digital strategy and very little digital presence, what are a couple practical first steps that you'd recommend for that? So I had this conversation with somebody yesterday um, and we have a, 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 an e-commerce business as well. And, and I kind of had to apply this. So um, autoresponders with FAQs. So there's nothing worse right now. I'm here and I'm, 15 people and all of a sudden I'm five people. Holy shit. So that means I'm working 24 seven, right? And, and everything else that's happening. So you're getting at, and if we're an expert in our space, I know um, the real estate agents asked me the same 10 questions. Business owners asked me the same 10 questions. So the first thing I would recommend if, you, um, if you're limited on the, the automation side is exactly that. It's um, put an autoresponder on your email. We'd like to, we're going to get back to you, obviously, due to COVID, da da da, da and, and it's, so they're not just waiting 24 or 48 hours for you to get them back. Answer the question. Again, it takes no time. Two seconds to put an autoresponder on your Google. Um, Instagram and Facebook also allow for some automations. You can go in. Right now, there's some cool tools, um, COVID-19 business practices, and they've got all kinds of shit that's just right there that allows for just ease of operation. Again, they know. They know their consumers. They know what people want. We're all in the same situation. And people are a lot less... Um, People have a lot more patience right now for they want to feel safe too. So if, if it takes them a little bit longer to figure it out, that that's okay. Versus before it was like, oh my God, right? So that's the best thing. Auto auto responders answering FAQ. Everybody's asking you the same questions, guaranteed. 
And then, and then is there one particular social media platform you get on or it really depends on the business? So it really depends on who you're, yeah. Like if you're an accountant, you're going on LinkedIn. If you're a, a curator of food or clothing, you're probably going on Instagram. If you're um, professional services, talking to boomers, you're probably going on Facebook. Um, generally, you probably need at least two. Some businesses like us, we need four or five, but, but then it's, and when I talk about the messaging being different, I mean, it's, it's the same. Um, if it's different, it's just little fundamentals, the way it's curated for each platform. But ultimately, if I go to your Facebook page and I go to your LinkedIn page and I go to your Instagram page and they're not the same, I have no time for you. What you're giving me mixed messages already. No, that's, that's, that's fair comment. You know, um, for those, uh, for those watching at home, like chambers are all about the, uh, the way they help people network. Uh, with business leads and connections and ultimately sales and marketing. And it's about government relations and advocacy and the work right now we're doing with levels of government on supporting businesses. So I, when we talk about marketing and sales, like this is an important function of the chamber. That's one of the reasons we did the Facebook marketplace just to help create yeah, yeah, some resiliency. Yeah. So, but what I wanted to ask you about Facebook then was, do you recommend if you had the budget, would you be running Facebook ads or would you be running LinkedIn ads? Or you'd say LinkedIn's yeah. different. It's a whole other animal and, and it's going to get expensive. LinkedIn. So um, Mary Grace, and Tango, you know, Mary Grace, she made me on the call. She's a local mortgage expert right, yeah. for years. So if I was in Mary Grace's business, LinkedIn is perfect. And that's a perfect place when I'm ready to be sales salesperson to get on and just start engagement, talking to people. You can get very specific um, with who I wanted to talk to. So if I was selling a service to Chambers, I could go on and search Chamber CEO titles. You can also, it, rather than advertise on LinkedIn, you can do like LinkedIn Premium. It's like 60 or 70 bucks a month. It's a joke for what they give you. And it's the ultimate trolling tool in the business world. I can know everything about you and your perfect. It's just, I'm just, it is what it is. The internet's a crazy place. You can give me 300 emails and I can put them in there and I can... With just 300, if you give me 3,000, we can really talk. Um, I can target ads to lookalikes just with an email. You start giving me phone numbers and names. The internet's a really, people say, scary place. It's a beautiful place if you know how to use it for business. So um, Facebook and Instagram advertising right now is unbelievably cheap, like undervalued four times maybe. The CPM doesn't make sense. What you get even for $5 a day, when you see these ads, for only five, it's legit. For five dollars a day, you can literally get hundreds, sometimes one or two thousand people seeing your content. So people are like, "Oh, I only had a couple of hundred people see." Like, fuck, a couple of hundred people, like three thousand people watch me talk. I put my feet up for the rest of the day because I know the phone's ringing. Mm -hmm. A couple of hundred people, like that's insane. Anybody that's been selling knows you don't just talk to a couple of hundred people. You don't get that kind of attention. The world is is a different place because of it. So, um, you know, the sort of passion again, sorry, I'll just back up for a sec. Um, you have to, uh, it's, a, it's an absolute must. Um, even if you have $50, spend it, you know, that's the thing fundamentally that people don't understand. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, me, I'm open. I'm an advocate for just doing things. Pro the more the people just do things the right way, the better it all is for, for us in our space. So, for me, it doesn't matter who wins the business. I'm saying you don't have to, like 17 years ago, I was selling ads in the Toronto Star for 40,000 bucks on a Saturday. That's crazy. 40,000 bucks. I can get the same reach for two grand online. Hmm. So, you know, again, if you can spend 50 or 500, $100 a month, the direct ROI, you'll start to see it, no problem, but just the impression count. So I highly recommend it. What scares people away is they think they need to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. You don't have to. Um, I definitely recommend doing it properly from the start, getting a setup. You know, you don't just hit the boost post button, but another time for another conversation. Um, it's no, definitely, I, think, I, think, I think that's that's interesting. Yeah. The uh, When we had that, we had Tally Hassanoff on uh, recently, she's a marketing professional. I asked her the same question I'm going to ask you, which is in a, at a time where everybody, especially every accountant, chambers, uh, business associations, we're all saying cash is, cash is king, uh, preserve your cash. But uh, Vitaly was saying that right now, if you can, you should be spending on marketing. And I think if I heard you right earlier, you said don't cut your marketing budget. 
So I we Tell us we, about that. Yeah. We do, so I so I will use uh, myself as an example. Um, only this once. Uh, our, real, our realtors company. I said it in the presentation. We doubled down. Um, we doubled our Google spend. Um, and I'm not spending thousands and thousands of dollars here. Like it's not what I'm saying. It's all relative though. So we doubled our Google spend and we doubled our Instagram, Facebook spend on Google. We spend money for keyword search. So we want people typing in virtual tours and calling us Instagram and Facebook. We take advantage of the insanely affordable rates, um, that they charge for CPM cost per thousand views. And we just get crazy branding. Um, so we, we doubled it up and we actually, and we took out, um, I read an amazing article by Mark Cuban when this first happened about the, you know, going back to branding and, and what you do now and people will remember that. And, you know, I'm sure that plays way more to, you know, um, sort of larger people, like people think Branson's a hero because instead of taking a bit, well, he didn't take it. They refused him a bailout. He sold a bunch of assets to take over. So now he's, he's playing his brand. He's playing, I'm saving the company. So when, when the airlines open back up, you know, he's going to get his money back and then some selling at the Delta. But the point is, um, you know, we, we, we double down business, that industry down 60 to 80%. Our business is only down 40%. New customers, I'm acquiring new customers at a rate of 50%. One out of two people booking with us as a new customer. I've never seen that before ever. Now, okay, sure. The fact that we have a tool that all of a sudden is very relevant in the marketplace is, is huge, but how are these people finding us? This isn't people that, you know, these aren't Amandola, Snap, Vaughn people that are finding us. That's why I'm using that as an example. We service the entire GTHA. So it's from Oakville to Oshawa to Barry. It's because they saw us on Facebook or they went in. So yeah, absolutely. And, and I gave that stat. Burrell and Associates is a great organization of the states I follow. And that was where um, the 16%. And, you know, for anybody that, that doesn't believe it, and again, just kind of Google, do the research yourself. But, you know, the accountants are right in saying, if you can't pay the bill, then you can't spend the money. So we do have to sit there and say, but then you pick your spots, you know, and, and I, I want to be sort of careful what I say, because I know there's a lot of people that are affected by this. But in some spots you may, you know, especially if your transaction isn't right now today and you don't necessarily need the, the body to execute, you may reallocate budget from other places because again marketing and branding isn't always about let's close a deal today brian it's 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 if you're doing it properly um you know we're not selling we're marketing but selling is abc like you really want to see passion let's go knock on doors together and i'll show you crazy but but we're when we're on social we're just marketing top of mind awareness top of mind awareness just so i go back to mary grace you know if, if, if she's on linkedin she's got her ad and snap she does the traditional thing i need a mortgage she comes top of mind that's the long answer. Short answer. No, no, that is great. Well, that was, so let's go back to what, what I said at the outset. People know you for Snap Media. So I'm interested in hearing about Snap because to to my team at the chamber, when we think about Snap, it's, it, we think about you and your team and the great job you guys do in the community. It's primarily a newspaper that has great images of uh, events that are happening in the community. So I'm wondering how do you do that right now because there's, there's no events to take pictures of. So, okay, so so we've been, so, okay, so we had a pivot. So we look at what we have and, and right away, we're an essential service, so we have access. So all of a sudden, we changed our model from a traditional distribution through newsstands to a Canada Post distribution model. Way more expensive, but all of a sudden, our penetration, especially right now, like people are, you know, the, the something to do in one mailbox, right? So... Um, secondly, we just changed, we created the content a little bit differently. We, we started to include, and the same thing, we have a huge digital presence, as you know, same mindset. So, um, all we had to do in order to continue to keep revenue coming, because some people are doing well, some people aren't, some people are okay, but there's always a need. We just have to, you know, focus on it. Um, we changed the content, a little bit more information. So resource tool, where to find this, where to find that, because again, there's a lot of information that needed to get out there and we do a really good you know, that, that vehicle does a really good penetration to a certain certain segment of the community. So there's a huge need for it. Um, and then it was easy from there because um, all the good started happening, which is what Snap is all about. And in today's day and age, we don't, um, you know, if we cover on, on a normal month, the, the paper's 40 to 60 pages. And there's, like you said, there's 100 events in it. Uh, today, it's 24 pages, 20 pages, all good. Um, content 
again, we're in the technology age. I get content submitted all day long now. So, wow, what a great thing. Not only were we able to pivot and put it back out in front of people, change the content and give, we understand the audience. This is great because this is actually full circle back to the presentation. We gave them what they wanted and all of a sudden we started generating revenue again. Just much more focused approach. Um, and, and, you know, again, we didn't waste time trying to talk to 100 people to try and sell 20 ads. We talked to the right 30 people and sold 20 ads. Okay, makes sense. And we so advertise you, on social media, pick up Snap in your mailbox. Where did you advertise? Instagram, Facebook, just cheap. I think I spent 100 bucks, but you know what? 6,000 extra people saw it. And I'll tell you, when Snap hits the mailbox, our DMs go crazy that day with people tagging, you know. But, but what I was saying was all of a sudden the content's being submitted. It takes nothing to how many photos do you send your friends every day? And John, when, when you, John, one of the questions I've had for members though, is like when you advertise or you're on, you put a message out on LinkedIn or Facebook and it tells you, you had 4,000 views. Can you trust that number? So, okay. So the thing about the digital world is it's not going to lie. You can't lie. The auditing is amazing. So it's like, I use the Toronto star analogy. I sold the golf town a page for 40 grand because 2 million people read it on Saturday. Well, now we look and we say, well, what's the audited circulation from NADBank? And it's paid CERC, not free CERC, and da 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 The digital, it's fully audited. They can't, it's like, I mean, look, Facebook got outed for helping Trump win the election. You know, like, you can't lie. So what it's doing is it's embellishing the stat. So the number is accurate. It's understanding sort of the number. So um, it's not about likes. It's not about, you know, it doesn't, so um, on Monday, uh, Mondays, I post a Monday motivation video. And this Monday's video, I'll tell you right now the stats, because this is a, one thing people don't understand. And this is going to answer. So this video has, it only has 81 likes. Okay. And it, you can't see it. 81 likes, and it says 923 of my followers have seen it. But the video itself has 3,700 views. now. So it, it counts engagement in many different ways. So it really depends what you're after. So those 3,700 people probably didn't watch the whole two minutes and 51 seconds. 953 of them watched the whole three minutes. Those other uh, 2,700 people watched for anywhere from three seconds on. And the way advertising online works, different kinds of advertising. So you're watching YouTube and you get to skip through commercials. So you, you, you then the retargeting starts. So different ads target people for the longevity of how long they watched for. So when it says 4,000 people, so 4,000 people saw my face. And do I really care that only 1,000 of them listen to me? Because fuck, 1,000 people listen to me. Come on, right? So yes, you can trust it. Um, they're also pulling your number one feed off the post and saying, hey, and but read it. For five bucks, you can get. So it's just basically just enticing you um, to purchase. But it's also showing you like case in point when I said, if you look at the number and the amount, it's you're, you're asking the question, because it's too good to be true. But that's the problem. That's, why, that's, that's right. That's, that's why right. the company's four times. So it's like, think about Google. That like Google's value comes in at like ads and, and that kind of shit, right? They're revenue based. What's right. their IP really worth? They know everything about everybody in the world. Google is the real Illuminati, if you want to talk conspiracy theory. I mean, that just <laughs> from a data point of view, who knows more than Google? Nobody. Facebook starting to. 3 billion users. Google still runs the world. And did you, did you say, if, if I caught it correctly, you said in your presentation during COVID, well, that's not distracting. White balance. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, you said in the presentation, uh, don't adjust your pricing during COVID. Value. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, and there's a, was a great article I just, I read just the other day, I can send it to you from work. Um, the, the, if you start undervaluing yourself, you're done. Like you, I would create more value before I give it away. If you're giving it away out of desperation, number one, maybe you just really need to just step back, check the ego and start over. And most, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've won some, I've had some big losses too, but anytime I lost it, it was um, because I couldn't check my ego fast enough. The minute I did and I got away from it, but yeah, you can't be desperate because people, like people, and people, you know, um, people see it right through you. It comes right out of your pores, you know. Right. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. I give more value. 
And, and it's also how you pitch it. You don't want to be desperate either. So, hey, so um, I use the real estate example just because just it's easy. So right now we're giving, we have a, a functionality and I think the average order is say four or 500 bucks and this add-on is $50 and it's through a third party. So we reached out to the third party and guess what? We got it for half price. I can afford to give a $25 add-on away to close a 300 or $500 deal. Sure. The guy's just like, wait, you can still give it to me right now because it's good. Like I can't even get a roller shade. That's why I white balance. So we had this conversation. Hundred. I tried to buy a, a two foot roller shade to cover this light here so that the camera would work. I was $115. I was going to pay for a $30 blind and then I couldn't even get it. So if they would have told me it was coming today, I would have paid. It didn't matter. Hmm. So it's, again, it's understanding your, your business and really understanding who your audience is. And we spend too much time with this horizontal audience. Let's just go vertical. Yeah, you, you drive around the streets, right? You know, you see like the whole, one day there's a, a, a structure, the next day they tear it down, then there's a hole. So that's like the first couple of weeks you're driving by. Then the concrete pours, that's like a month. And then the next day, all of a sudden there's a building there, right? It's the foundation that takes the hardest part. After that, it's easy. Well, it's definitely about the foundation. Um, so one of the questions we received online is, uh, is the advice you're giving, how does it differ for those businesses that were already positioned to sell online versus a bricks and mortar store? You should be like, well, I, 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 I'm happy to answer it, but I, you're, you're the expert here. So yeah, well, I mean, listen, I, 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 I'll just, I'll just, seller and you're not, yeah. and you're not experienced now. Hold on. Are you a traditional online retailer or are you what was a bricks and mortar store working out of your home shipping online? There's a big difference. Right. right. Big, big difference. Um, and my service provider some. But everybody's buying online everything. Like I said, I just I gave an example. Um, so you're a furniture store. You're selling couches. You're doing 3% online. And you think that in three or four years, you can get to 10%. And COVID happens and you're at 10%. Three years, two months. Well, the, the, listen, this is the new reality. That's how I, that's how we're I have sell. online business. I'm I'm a you're you're way ahead of a lot of people that don't. Your issue is if you're so the the the, the answer the question is, I think means if I have an online business and my business still isn't. So again, it really it really goes back to what's the online business. So if I'm selling something on Etsy. Or if I'm, um, you know, selling a professional service or if I'm selling clothing or shit, if I'm selling PPE today, it's all rel the, the Fundamentally, if you want to make money, people need to know you're there. Mm -hmm. so if you don't have the ability to let people know you're there by yourself, what other option do you have but to spend money? Well, I, I and yeah, and I, and I think... I think the answer goes back to what we were saying earlier too. It's going to depend on the type of business specifically you own and which vertical. And, you know, for those that are asking questions like that, you can reach out to the chamber. They can reach out to you. Um, you need an online presence right now. I was on a session recently talking about an e-commerce strategy. If you have no, no strategy, I like what you said earlier about pivoting. If you have no online presence, you have to pivot. Hopefully you've already done that. You need a website of some kind. It's got to be similar messaging on social media and you got to be present somewhere because if they don't know you're in existence and selling, then how are you going to sell? Like, right. And who, and if you're at that point, then I go full circle back to like, I'm on my notes here and people come in my boardroom and they think I'm crazy because I don't take the money at the end. And I'm like, I can't execute for you. I don't, I can help you figure out who you are and who you need to talk to, but you need to do it yourself. I'm just going to overcharge you to do it. So unless you're like a, uh, you know, no, but it's it's equal true. You're you're you know, unless you're a large corporation, you're going to get more value pay, paying a student minimum wage to sit. So this is a great okay. So I hire um, Lucas. He's probably on the call. We have this chat, and I hire him. And amazing, you know, huge asset for us. And he's you know, step really stepping up right now. Adversity defines character. All this kind of great stuff you learn about people. But we have this conversation back in October. And he says, I never thought I would be out of school doing what I want to do. And I said, well, I never thought I'd be paying somebody to be on social media all day. So, you know, we go in the office and it's like, turn your fucking phone off. What are you doing? You're on personal time. You're not working. Da, 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 da. I'm like, if my guys, now it's like I'm in a boardroom and I'm getting irate if they're not 
on Facebook and Instagram. And I don't even care if you're as a company profile as your own, as long as you're engaging. So it's, you have to, um, people got to know you're there. Simple. Step one is doing it yourself. If you're successful and you want to grow, then the answer is just, it's all about the, the right marketing strategy and online. And I make it a, a big part of our business is traditional media and traditional media. Def, I, I put a billboard on highway 27 and one on in Islington and my phone lit up for a month. But um, again, every business is unique and will require a unique strategy. And yeah, at the end of the day, budget obviously is relevant, but I'm saying you can get started for a hundred bucks and some time. There's a, a program called Canva free for all those people that think they want to learn Photoshop, but can't like me, no time. That's very overwhelming when you open it. Um, any screen that opens and still takes time to load and then the fonts get really small. I'm just like, no, I got to leave. Um, Canva is free. So all these Instagram memes and shit, you can just sit at home, drink a cup of coffee or have a vodka and make funny memes all night. And then boom, you got Instagram feeds the next day. Very, very, very easy. Can we go back to, uh, I want to ask you one more question with the newspaper industry. Sure. The, uh, you're, you're, I mean, I'm reading about all these uh, national papers that are either running at uh, skeleton staff, they're in financial jeopardy, they can't generate advertising revenue. I, I think this is going to be an industry that's going to be permanently impacted by COVID-19. Like travel. Uh, I want, yeah, well, for sure. So you're right. Um, so I thought I, I should ask you that uh, while we're together. So it goes back to rich content and the right audience. So, so I talked to you about Snap, right? Everything works for somebody if, if, if we focus just on that. So like I said, I don't, I know what I need to make it work. I know what I need to make it viable. And if I need uh, you got a visitor, if I need 20 or 30, so, so if I'm 60 pages and I need 60 or 80 ads, if I'm 20 pages, I need 20 or 30 ads. I, I don't need to talk to thousands of people or try to take this great big product. I need to look at what the message is, who's going to get it on the other end and actually react. Um, you know, and that's who, so, you know, I put you on the front page and your phone rings for a couple of weeks. So it's, it's again, um, identifying the niche and then executing sort of accordingly is, is the, the great example there. The problem with, um, print and radio outdoor that's changed isn't, they don't work. Um, they all work and rates have adjusted I added the Toronto star is not $40,000 anymore. Um, but but we 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 have to really just again it's it's about identifying sort of the niche and and the audience. But what what happened for these guys was at the very beginning of the whole you know digital revolution. The, the part that you don't hear about is people think oh you know the internet. So it's it's what well, first the classified business went online, and that was the most lucrative end of any print machine. And these newspapers in the post World War II into the late nineties early two thousands licenses to print money. What an industry. Um, you know, the whole watch Mad Men, watch, you know, read the history of Quebec Corps, all this crazy stuff. Um, Conrad Black, Rupert Murdoch, that's where they made all their fortunes, right? Um, classifieds, Toronto Star would be doing two, three hundred million a year in classifieds, paying people minimum wage, selling them same ads. I would sell to a retailer for four thousand. If you wanted to help more ad in the Star or the Globe on a Saturday, it would cost you the ten. Then Craigslist happened. So the most lucrative part of their and a huge chunk of their volume disappeared. Then what happened is. The news isn't the news anymore. Like as soon as we're done, I'm gonna throw a hey Google and be careful, Susan talk. 680 is gonna come on. And in 15 minutes, I'm gonna know everything I need to know about today. And I can go on and carry conversations or whatever have you. So it goes back to rich content. If I'm putting something out that doesn't appeal or have any relevance to anybody, they're not going to get it. So it's like the city of Vaughn, we we do the celebrate Vaughn magazine, it's a big product. It's not cheap. Uh, you know, you're into the four thousand plus dollar a page range, but there's only room for sixty people. There's thirteen, or I guess nineteen thousand businesses if we go all in in Vaughn. I need sixty of them. Just got to find the right sixty people, and my return rate is eighty percent. So that's telling me that there's about forty five people in that mix that it works wonders for. Mm. So it is is. Is traditional media, it's not just print, is traditional media, I argue radio is making a huge resurgence right now, right? Billboards were on fire, now all of a sudden not so much because nobody's driving anymore. Right. So it, it, it's, it's, it's the days of these companies having the power and the cloud and making the money they made are, are 
over, um, you're going to see like the Metroland. No one's printing flyers anymore. That paper will be the rest of the way out now. But it's all, it's the same. So the same thing applies to new media, Brian. It's understanding the product and who wants it and just giving and just focusing on that and not worrying about that one guy that may trickle in or that one gal that may trickle in because they're going to come anyway. I, I, I agree with you. Um, I, uh, I received from my team, like some of the comments that were posted online, a lot of uh, congratulations, appreciation for uh, us doing this and thanking you, John, for great content. Uh, Nadia Sorelli says, uh, and she gave us some great content for our last segment as well on marketing. She great. says, yeah, and that is great. Just let's make sure that uh, we're using sites like uh, Facebook Marketplace. It doesn't have to be through the chamber. That's one way. But just, yeah, yeah, that's just a great stuff. that you guys did. Yeah, the city of Vaughan just put a great uh, VBEC. They just yeah. put a really good resource out. We're actually, I'm all about it. Nadia's right. It's just about supporting. So we've got about a thousand people that have done um, business with Snap over the years, local businesses, and I think a good chunk of them still around. So I have one of my dev guys building out just a quick directory, just to populate it, just another resource for people. But Nadia's right, there's, and, and it just goes, and Nadia does, me and Nadia talk a lot, uh, we're in the same, and, and I know I know she she um, practices a lot of the same principles that, that I preach, because you know we've been, been talking and friends and doing business for like 15 years, and same thing. She'll tell you, like, there's just a lot of ways out there. You don't have to sort of break the bank every time. But, um, yeah, tons of free resources. I also, I got a text from somebody about a blind, too. Mary Grace was on the call. So I'm going to have to call. How am I going to get this? Uh, Brenner will be happy because there you go. the white balance won't be off. So There you go. You look good. You know, um, thank you so much for having me. I have, I got one last question for you. Yeah, please. I'm good. I'll stay. I'll talk. You're good? It. Okay. No, I wanted to ask you, like, because I because I appreciated what you said earlier, and I know our audience did, about right now, the way you're selling, the way you're communicating with your members is primarily online. It might be by phone, but it's, it's going to be online. So the question is, what is the right number of emails that you can send your distribution list? So because I, you, you don't want to lose them as well by over sending it right now, everybody's sending emails. So we're all yeah. getting a bit uh, overloaded. So it's, a, it's a trick. Okay. So we use a extensive automation system. So we, you get emails when you interact with us on a far more regular basis than when you don't. So I, I'm down with the whole general monthly and right now you could go bi-weekly. So we went in one business. I didn't send a communication for five weeks because we needed to reevaluate pivot and we had to service what we had to service before we could grow another one, sometimes three times a week. So it, it, it's a loaded question. It requires some strategy, but I would say my recommendation fundamentally when I'm telling people is do it properly. So, so everything I've talked about, I still definitely believe in a proper setup. So like you can get an email template set up proper for like a few hundred bucks. And then at least it looks pretty. Um, and, or do it yourself. All these tools, MailChimp, constant content, have it all. So if you're not using a more elaborate system, like an active campaign or a Marketo or something like that, which a lot of people aren't, um, I would say, again, you got to invest a little bit of time and just look at the data. So if you're sending something out once a month, cause that's kind of what we think is normal. And I would say twice a month is fine. Um, if you want to continue from there, you need to look at who's engaged with your content. So to your point, if we keep sending the whole list, this email all the time, you're going to start to see them leave. And, and I'm a believer in, like I said at the very beginning, I'm authentic. Like if you don't, people will say, you posted that, what are they going to think? I don't give a shit. If you don't like what I have to say, don't watch me, unfollow me and leave. Um, horses, when they race, they wear these, the masks, right? The blinders so that the noise beside them, they don't get distracted and fall off course. So I'm a big believer in that too. Like, so you, you, as soon as you give a shit, you're losing, you know, you and your business better than anybody else. So get past the noise. And I think that's the first step to, uh, to winning. I, I think it's great to end on that. Uh, you've been great to have, and uh, I'm sure the, uh, the charity of your choice is going to love the donation. We'll tell you, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on, on uh, yeah, that. Okay, the, um, the, the, as you know, we've done lots of great different charity works, a big, huge fan of mental health in the hospital, but Peter at the food bank, this guy's 82 front line. He's, like, he's incredible. Guys, a machine. Yeah. A fucking machine. There's a free 50 for Peter. I love him so much. Thanks uh, for having me, Brian. I, I really do appreciate this and for everybody that watched and of course, Render for uh, for making sure I didn't look too uh, too bright today. 
Oh, you look good. Um, so th thanks again, John, for doing this. We'll, we'll talk offline soon. Uh, for those at home, um, one thing I want to tell you, a lot of you have reached out saying, how do we get gloves, masks, sanitizer, uh, other PPE equipment? Uh, I did notice recently, like some of the stores like Canadian Tire may uh, sometimes have these products. I think that's frustrating for people. So I have two uh, suggestions for people because it's a very common question. Number one is call the store before you go. Uh, we've, we've experienced personally that if you call all the stores before you go, uh, such as Shoppers Drug Mart, you have a better chance of getting it. And the other more practical way is the Chamber now has a list of uh, businesses in Vaughan, in Richmond Hill, in Markham, in Aurora, so all the York Region area, uh, businesses that uh, as of a few days ago did carry particular supplies. Uh, that's on the Vaughan Chamber website. Uh, I would still call them as well in advance, unless you're ordering online, because uh, you know who knows if they still have all the products. But hopefully, that'll help people at home. And uh, John, did you want to say something? Or? No, I just want to say we went, we just we we ended up um, doing an order. So through our real estate, same thing. People wanted it. We we felt so. My guys were out in these houses wearing you know booties and masks and gloves. Whether they need it or not doesn't matter. The customer feels so much more. So it's like if I owned a retail shop, like if I got to wear a mask all day and everybody that wants to come in has to wear a mask, the best 60 bucks I'm spending is on those masks. So yeah, no, it's, it's, and, but you got to be careful right now too, because it's, it's just everywhere, right? I, I, I totally agree. That's why we came up with the list with our, with our friends at the other chambers locally. And, and the ultimately it, it does make people feel more comfortable. So um, with that, we'll uh, wish you all a good day. We'll see you soon. Thanks again, John. And uh, thanks, thanks everybody. Great day. Have a great rest of the week. You too.